What does an RV newbie need on their very first trip? Well, in this video, we're gonna share our top 10 newbie essentials to make your maiden voyage a success. Only the stuff you need, guys. Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And my name is Mercedes. And long story short, we sold most of our possessions in pursuit of freedom, independence, and adventure. Because life is so short, guys. We recently had an RV Odd Squad member named Jerry reach out to us. Jerry's wife is battling cancer right now, and, and he needed to get her treatment at a hospital that was out of his state. So they had to buy an RV and go where she could get the proper treatment that she needed. And Jerry said, hey guys, if you could just tell me a list of what I absolutely need, right? Just the essentials, what would it be? And that got us thinking, there's so many RV accessories out there, but it's really hard to know what you really need. Well, having been RVing now for a couple of years, we have a sense of what's a need versus a want, right? Now, most RVers go out and they buy everything. We, we are guilty. completely guilty of this. We still have stuff that we haven't opened. As you continue RVing, you can buy more accessories later right. as you figure out what you really want. Right. So the three things that I'm gonna talk about here is tire safety, general safety, and fire safety. And the biggest danger that you and your family are in when you're RVing is moving from point A to point B, and that's mainly from tire blowouts. You really have to monitor your tires, guys. Number one, for your family's safety, but secondly, if you know that your tires are being protected and monitored when you're driving, it's gonna help lessen that stress level, especially on your first trip, right? You're pulling a big rig, you're not used to it. Now, we started out with, with a tire minder and we did a whole video on this, but we found the TST at about a year in and I'll tell you something, what a difference. We love the TST system. This is a tire pressure monitoring system. There's three problems that you're gonna have with a tire when you're moving. It's not having it inflated correctly, and when that happens, the tire heats up. And the third thing is gonna be getting something from the road into the tire. This will warn you of a slow leak. It notifies you when the tires are getting too hot and it constantly monitors the pressure in your tires so that you can feel comfortable. So not only is it important that you have a TST system to monitor your tires, you have to have the necessary equipment to fix, repair, and protect yourself when you need to change a tire or you're broken down on the side of the road. So I think these things go without saying, but you need a tire jack, you need a tire iron, a tire plug kit is great, it saved us once. They're only 10, 12 bucks, guys. Just have a tire plug kit, they're very easy to do. And you know, you might be waiting hours to get a tow truck. And then finally, when you're pulling a 42 foot fifth wheel like we are, we can't just pull off at the gas station and get air. So carry your air with you. We did a video on the Vi Air. It was one of the very first things I bought. The Vi Air is a great product, but I've known so many RVers that went and bought cheap pumps for a hundred bucks. Harbor Freight. Yeah, Harbor Freight. They purchased it at Harbor Freight. They're junk guys, they break down. And the worst thing you want to happen is to have it sitting in the back of your truck for six months because you never needed to use it. And then when you need to use it, it doesn't work. So buy a Vier. Hey guys, we wanted to interrupt the top 10 newbie essentials real quick to mention something that is awesome. You see, we have a free newbie series class coming up on the last Saturday of the month. So our first class is going to be February 27th. That's going to be 9 a.m. Pacific. 12 noon Eastern. We're going to cover everything that you need to know as a newbie. It's going to be a live stream and it's going to be free. Make sure that you are signed up for our newsletter. You can just click the link below and join the RV Odd Squad so that you can get the corresponding course materials and downloads as well. And now that we've talked to monitoring your tires, you've got to have specific equipment just in case you break down. Now, Mercedes and I were able to safely get off to the side of the road, but once you're on the side of the highway, you have to have safety equipment because it's dangerous out there, guys. Um, people are whizzing by you at 75, 80 miles an hour, and it's even worse when the tire you're having a problem with is right against that traffic. Sometimes there's not even enough breakdown lane to get off the shoulder. So the number one thing you wanna do is get as far off the shoulder as you can, if you can. The second thing you're going to want to do is you're going to wear a safety vest, right? Always have one of these. These things are super cheap, three or four bucks. It just helps other drivers see where you are on the highway, especially at night. Now, this is going to sound kind of funny, but out of all the equipment I have that I like to play with, it's this. It's called the Hokina Safety System. I thought this was the coolest thing. I think it's 40 bucks for the whole thing, but they're, they're these lights. 
And these lights have different functions. It flashes, it actually lights up, runs different things. And what's really cool about this is there is actually magnets and a little thing in the back so that you can either hang it or stick it to the truck. If I'm on the side of the road, people are gonna see me. Number one, they'll see me in my vest. Number two, they'll see three or four of these around my RV. And I can even lay these out as a puck behind my rig about 50 feet. People are gonna see that flashing going on when it's sitting there. Like most guys, you know, Boy Scouts, we love flashlights and we love jackknives, right? Well, I bought the Olight and I was a little intimidated by the cost. I think this thing was 119 bucks, but I've had this thing for two years and this thing beams light like, like you wouldn't believe. It charges off a of USB and regular AC and DC. The two biggest dangers in RVing is tires blowing out and fire. Always make sure that you shut your propane off when you're going from point A to point B. It's very, very important because a lot of these big, big rigs have uh, propane lines that run underneath the RV all the way to the back. We've got a grill on the back and I've got an outlet that I can plug into a quick connect. Well, when you're pulling from point A to point B, just like getting a nail in your tire, something on the road can jump up under your rig and cut that line. And if your propane's on, you're in big, big trouble, guys. So I had RV'd for one full year and I forgot to shut my gas lines off a couple of times when we came to a stop and I could smell gas at this. Now, there was no hole in my lines, but there was a problem with the regulator. So I started doing a little research. That's when I found gas stop. So the gas stop is gonna do a few different things. If there's ever a leak in your lines, it's gonna, it has an emergency shut off. That valve will close so that no additional propane can leak. The next thing it's gonna do is it's gonna let you measure how much propane is in your tank, which is fan phenomenal. They're super, super easy to install. You just plug them in like this. You click this three or four times, that activates it and you're covered. All right. You ready? Install it. Quickly, 10 seconds, 11 seconds, 15 seconds, 21 seconds. Thirty seconds to install it. Oh yeah. There it goes. Okay, it's full. This is a great little product. Now, if there's ever a hole cut after this, whether it's here or underneath the RV, this thing will immediately shut that gas off so that no gas is gonna leak, thereby causing a, an explosion or a fire. This video isn't specific to the type of RV you have. We're trying to be general and address all RVs. And regardless of the type of RV you have, whether it's a towable or a motorhome, you have to secure the contents inside. Now, after two years of doing this, we've learned a thing or two because there's a lot of gadgets that you can buy to make sure this doesn't scratch and make sure this doesn't fall. I mean, and with good reason, right? Because the contents will shift upon driving. But guess what? You can just use towels or you can take the stuff that you have all in the kitchen and just stuff it in the fridge and then the stuff won't move. And the same goes for your cabinets. The more stuffed everything is and the less that things can move, the better off you are. The best way to think of this is that every time you move your RV, it's like there's a mini earthquake inside and it's shifting all the contents. So half the battle is just keeping things snug and tight so that they don't move while you're driving. And the most valuable tool of all that you have is your common sense. So just make sure that the counters are clear when you're driving. Make sure that things are packed nice and tight. And I really recommend using what you already own. These are your best friends. I love bungees. Mercedes calls me bungee man. And the reason why <laughs> is I've got tons of bungees. I love my bungee cords. Now everybody's RV is going to be a little bit different. Our RV has six different slides. So you have to pay really close attention. Not only that everything is clear when the slides come in, but you got to make sure that nothing is going to come out like a drawer or a door is going to pop out so that when you go to put those out, something's going to get crushed. It happened to us on this RV. So this slide comes into here and then the door, some stuff had fallen off inside this closet and pushed the door out. So I couldn't see that. So we put the slides out and this actually ripped this 
this piece of trim right off as it went out. And it, luckily it didn't break this door off, but it did bend this little handle right here. This is just my inside bag of bungees. <laughs> We've moved this RV enough to know what which bungee goes with. These things have a lot more uses than just tying stuff down, guys. These are great for in the house, but they're no good for outside. The mm. sun wears these things down and after three or four months, they'll literally fall apart and break. So you wanna use the hard rubber ones outside, use these on the interior so the bottom line is i don't know what your rv looks like only you know what your rv looks like everybody's going to make a mistake it's going to take you a little time to get used to the rvs start building your checklist now as you go through and believe me for the first eight to twelve trips you'll be adding something to every checklist because you can't think of everything because it's a new rv and no rv is the same Surge protectors are for protecting your rig from Parks Power. If there's ever a surge from lightning, from anything, a sur surge because they have horrible electric, your surge protector is going to protect your RV and all the wiring in it, which is thousands and thousands of dollars to replace. In the first few weeks of RV, Mercedes and I met a guy who told us that all his RV got fried because he didn't have a surge protector when he started out. And it was a brand new RV. It, we've used a few a surge protectors since we started. This one, hands down, is the best surge protector available on the market. When power's out, Mercedes loves just peeking out the window and seeing if his base is red. Something that the Power Watchdog does that no other surge protection company does is if you blow power, typically with other surge protectors, the surge protector you bought is gonzo. It's got to be thrown away. These are three, four hundred bucks sometimes. The Power Watchdog has a module that can be replaced by you, by us, right? And Hughes will send you a new module up to three times in the first year of you owning it. A few other things you're gonna wanna have is some dog bones, which are basically gonna help you convert from 30 amp to 50 amp. Not all RV sites are gonna have 50 amp. Some will have oh, only 30 amp. This is a big amp. notable mention. This is a big notable mention, guys, is you wanna have dog bones so that, <laughs> look at her filming me. <laughs> Get behind, get, come here. The bottom line here, guys, is if you have a 50 amp, you have to get a dog bone that will convert you down to 30 amp. If you have a 30 amp, you're gonna need the dog bone into a 50 amp. Just have the accessories that you need. We also carry a 20 amp dog bone. Um, and what this will do is we'll actually plug in when we're mood stalking at somebody's house. And with our soft starts on our air conditioners, we can run that AC on 120 amp power. The next thing you need are going to be chalks and blocks. One of the very first products I purchased for our very, very first trip were these cheapo chalks. And they still work. <laughs> they still work pretty darn good. Now, I would not suggest the yellow stackable blocks for leveling your RV. Those are junk. They fall apart. What I did end up doing, replacing those stackable yellow blocks because we had about two dozen of them. Every single one of them had broken. I went ahead and I made my own chalks so I can slide these either about a 10 inch lift or a six inch lift underneath <laughs> my landing pads. And then I went ahead and I built these to, to replace chalks. If it's a really Ooh. steep hill, I'll go ahead and slide these under. But if it's not a very steep lot, these will work just fine. The most important thing before you detach your truck from your rig is to put chalks Every RV lot or campground is gonna have a different slope in the campground. Some are not bad, some are really bad. So make sure that you have a good set of chalk so that your rig doesn't roll away when you detach. So I do have a notable mention. We went about a year before we bought snap pads and the snap pads slip right onto the bottom of your landing gear. And these things are fantastic. We absolutely love them. The beer steel can bend and it actually sinks in deeper because you don't have as wide of a footprint. This will make a mess out of those concrete slabs and it will really scratch these up until they get really rusty. So these snap pads are great. I highly suggest them, but they're not necessary on your first trip. Everybody has to have a couple of two by fours, maybe some extra plywood, two by six, two by eight, whether you get stuck or you're in a weird situation. It's always good to have a little bit of extra lumber. And as you guys can see, I took a two by eight and I actually screwed it into my frame down here oh, so it's out smart. of the way. Yeah. And all I got to do is just take out my impact hammer and drill those right out. So this is a two by eight that I can use if I ever need to. Nice. Hey, John, we have to change our license plate holder. We've never changed oh, that's it. that's bad, yeah. That's bad. That's a bad sign. That's really bad. 
Man. Yeah, let me fix it. All done. <laughs> <laughs> an absolute necessity to RVing the first time and every time is your hoses, right? So we're going to talk about your your poop hose, four inch, and we're going to talk about water hoses. Your waste and your water and your power is typically going to be on the driver's side of the RV, right? Typically these are somewhere in the middle. Sometimes they'll put them way out back. The other thing that's kind of important is you want to run these, the, your poop hoses, you want to run your poop hoses downhill, right? Shh, floats downhill, guys. You never want to float it uphill. And a quick lesson on your poop pipe, never, ever, ever leave your black tank open. Always have your black tank closed. You can, you can leave your gray open, you can leave your galley open, as long as you have a little whoop down inside. The P-trap. Okay, this is, yep. You know, we run a P-trap on our gray and our galley tank, so we don't have to be constantly dumping it. And then as soon as we, it's about three quarters full, Mercedes and I, she'll tell me, hey, with three quarters full on black, I'll go ahead and I'll shut down the valve on the gray. I'll shut down the valve on the galley. I'll let those tanks fill up so that I have that water to flush out this system when I do pull my black tanks. It's a big newbie mistake. They think that they can just leave their black tank open. That's a really, really bad idea, guys. Because number one, you're gonna be getting septic gases that come back up into your RV. And number two, all that crap that you drop it into the tank, it's gonna cause what they call a poop pyramid. Yeah, I said poop pyramid. All the solids start to build up. Your black tank needs water to be healthy. So even when you dump your tank, always add three or four bowls of fresh water into that tank. You never want it to run dry. So one of the very first videos I ever did for RV Odd Couple was way back two years ago where I talked about the poop pipe and I talked about the hoses. And we knew nothing. We knew nothing, <laughs> We knew, but we were giving it our best effort. I know a lot more about it now than I did then. I'm actually pretty comfortable using my pipes in this sometimes where I don't even use gloves anymore. You believe that, guys? No, it does not smell good. <laughs> I don't gag as much as I used to. Next thing we're gonna talk about, you can have three, four, five, six different water hoses if you want. To get started, you need two. And we suggest having a 25 and a 50. They even come in some 75s, but that's way too long. Because remember, the longer that hose is, the more you're gonna have to wrap it up, which is a pain in the butt. So Mercedes and I like a 25 and a 50. One of the hoses that you're gonna use for your water, it needs to be a drinkable water hose. Typically these will have a blue line or they'll be solid white. That means that there's gonna be no chemicals in that line for drinking water. So as you guys can see down here, this is my drinking water hose. This is my black water flush, okay? Then I have a third hose which I use for auxiliary, right? So if I wanna fill up Sage's pool, or whatever. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I love the Zero G hose when you first get it. I've never bought one that doesn't leak eventually. They always seem to leak. So this is a great one for my black hose. This one still leaks. I loved it for the first couple of months because they're very easy to fold up mm. and put away. They're easy to store, right? Just make sure that you keep your water drinking hose and your poop hose separate. The other thing I'm gonna to suggest to you is when I first started, I bought a splitter, right? For my water, because you usually only get one of these at each site. The splitter's fantastic, but I bought this nice solid brass with four different shutoffs going across. And guess what? I've lost two of them so far. It's just for some reason, I always forget them. Now I just buy the cheap, I think these are two or three bucks at Home Depot. Just go and buy three or four of them because I guarantee you're probably gonna forget one. That makes sense because they, they blend in. Hey, they just blend in, yeah. Quick question for you. It seems to me like the longer the RV, the more poop pipe and the more water hose you need because it's trickier, whereas if you're in a short like van, you don't need as much, is that fair? Absolutely. Everybody's rig is gonna be a different length, right? This one is 41 foot seven, and we've got a pipe back here, and then we've got a pipe up there. They're about 10 feet apart. Um, so I need to run a splitter on mine. Now, one of the things we loved about our first rig, the, our first sandpiper, we called her Sandy, is that she only had one. Both the black, the galley, and the gray went into one pipe. This rig is a little bit different. My galley's up front, my black and gray is in the back, and then I've got another gray tank for the outdoor kitchen. So I've got to run two pipes 
to a splitter and then down into the park's drainage. And then quick question. Do you recommend that people like buy each part individually or go and get a kit? I've used Rhino, I've used Campco, and every single one I've ever bought usually starts leaking. The best hose I ever had was the cheapest hose I ever bought. <laughs> the generic one? And believe it or not, it was a red generic hose, but it, I still have it. <laughs> you know, I still have it. So two things you gotta have. Black nitro gloves, don't buy the cheap ones, and hand sanitizer. Aww. Oh, I love you. Oh. All right, guys, so right here is typically where they're putting water filters on your wet bay. Mm -hmm. um, and the water filters that come with these RVs are pretty much Camcos. Um, they do not clean your water very well. What it is mainly is charcoal, and it makes cruddy water taste better. So it's like putting lipstick on a pig, literally. <laughs> you don't want to drink water out of these. One of the things that I did when I first bought an RV was we had this on our board. And then I went and I bought one of those filters that you put on the end of the garden hose as you feed it in. And after about six or seven months of RVing, Mercedes and I did a water video and we started researching about what was going on because our tub was starting to discolor, our kitchen sink was starting to discolor, the toilet was starting to discolor, and the water was just crazy, tasted horrible. We started doing some research and we found out that different water filters for different parts of the country, there's no perfect filter. So after doing a ton of research, we found ClearSource. ClearSource basically has three different filters that go on it, all the way down to a half, 0.5 micron, which really cleans that water. We think it's the best filter that you can get. I just basically take this up, throw it inside the RV when I wrap up, move on to the next location. If you do have the room in your wet bay, you can actually screw this up right into the wall, run some plumbing so you don't have to put it in and out, but this is no big deal to me. I am gonna to suggest to you when you wrap up your hoses, when you move inside, take the end of your hoses and connect them together, okay? So that the water's gonna stay in there not to leak inside your RV, but also you don't want contaminated stuff to get in those drinking water lines. So under your water lines on both sides and carefully connect those together so that water is trapped and nothing else can get in there. Yeah, cause otherwise it leaks a lot, right? Well, yeah, it's gonna leak all over your RV. That's a good tip. Yeah. It's the little things that really make a big difference, mm -hmm. huh? The other thing you're gonna notice that I did, because it's always tricky when you're running up from here to bend the hose up to go into these. So what I did was I bought, just bought a little um, brass, it's 90 degree elbow. That stays in there. And then I got a little flex hose right here. Oh, so that it. it's not getting, so it's not going all over <laughs> I the place. I got my stick. All right. It's Can not, you not the door. I thought there was a reindeer here. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Guess it's time to move on. All the water that comes into our RV goes through the clear source first. I don't have to worry about Sage brushing her teeth with the water in the RV. We can literally drink the water in the RV, but we have a Berkey. And um, our Berkey water, we think, I don't think we could ever go again without using a Berkey, right, babe? You yeah. love the Berkey. Good watch, good. Ooh. That's the one that got me yesterday. Really? You got a couple marks from the same one? Right there. Ouch. All right, guys, we've saved the best, most important thing that you need to RV successfully for last. You see, you need a nice comfy chair, preferably one that can fold up so it doesn't take a lot of room, beverage of your choice, and most importantly, good company. A notable mention is also you might want to consider these mats for outside. It'll definitely help keep the RV clean. And if you've seen our videos, you've seen that people will actually put their poop pipes on their picnic table. So you might want to cover that up because you never know who was there before you. In the next video, we're going to talk about the most important thing of all. You see, none of these accessories and none of these essentials really matter if you haven't properly insured your RV. In the next video, we're going to talk about the top 10 mistakes people make with their RV insurance. We'll see you in the next video.